17, I got my first law-related re job. And one of my old bosses asked me to walk in the room to close the door and to sit down. I was so excited because I wanted to tell him how enthusiastic I was for the job and the position. And as I sat down, he came around my chair. He put his hands on my shoulders and proceeded to offer me financial security. I was 17. I was so scared. And instinctively, I looked around that room looking for someone to advocate for me, to protect me. And seeing no one, I wanted to just fling those doors open and start running and run all the way home and never come back. But I knew that if I did that, he would forever write my story. And so absolutely fear-strucken, I stood up, and I told him to take his hands off of me, and that if he continued, I would scream as loud as I could, and I would tell the managing partner what happened. And then I made a promise to myself that I would return the next day and the day after that. And I told him so. Because the day I left, I would leave on my own terms. And so advocacy has been, for me, a life's calling. And advocacy is really about being able to take the facts and the events and put them into a story that provokes reflection and that inspires change. Because stories are powerful vehicles for change. And your life is your story. And how you tell that story will forever impact and color the world we live in. And so in today's Inspired Latina, Volume 5, I tell you the story of when I met my Goliath, who said I was not good enough for, to be a lawyer. But I could have told you the story about my coworkers who confessed to me that they didn't think I was smart. They were surprised. Because after all, they thought that the reason I'd gotten the job is because I was sleeping with the boss. After all, they said, you're a hot Latina. And I was in my 20s. Or I could have told you the story about the time that my schoolmates using the S word, which is just as bad as the N word, said to me, why don't you go back to where you came from? And what I knew then is what I know today, that no one but no one is going to write my story but me. And that we, as Latinas, have a very long history of abandoning our own story, of sitting on the sidelines, allowing others to go by, being content with being the supporting actresses in our own story. And we must be deliberate in changing that. And I know that traditionally, when we tell stories about men, they're stories of the world, of humankind, and of the human condition. But when we tell stories about women, especially Latinas, well, they're anomalies. Or they're just stories about women. We must be deliberate in changing that. Or think about how the story of the world is really being told. For example... Think about how the story of Lewis and Clark and the great expedition to explore the American West would have been told if Sacagawea was given pen and paper. Because I think it might change a little. It might go from the brave men who wandered off into the unknown to, so I met these two lost guys. It is our time to take our place in history. We must find a way to allow Latinas 
to allow them to feel that they can be the creators, that they can speak on behalf of all humanity, and that they can hold the creative genius. Because once we feel, as Latinas and as women, that we cannot hold that creative genius or speak on behalf of humanity, we will feel that what we have to offer is less in significance and in proportion. And so we will think smaller, we will work smaller, and we will have less economic power because our entire stage will also shrink. You see, ladies, at the end of the day, we the Latinas and we the women are not merely we the Latinas or we the women, but we the people. And in order to form a more perfect union, just as Sonia Sotomayor, the first Latina to occupy a seat on the U.S. Supreme Court, she's establishing justice. And what about Hilda Solis, former labor secretary, who worked for better wages and safety? She knew about ensuring domestic tranquility. And Sergeant Gianna Fembris, who drove convoys and took enemy fire during Desert Storm. <laughs> she provided for the common defense. And what about Dolores Huerta, who founded what became the American Farm Workers? She knows how to promote the general welfare. And what about Victoria Soto, a young school teacher who at 27 gave her life to protect her students. She knows about our liberty for ourselves and our posterity. They are the fibers with which the story of America is being told, and they are the fibers that are weaved into that American fabric, and they are the living, breathing preamble to your constitution. And if you are to do them justice, you must believe that you can speak on behalf of all humanity, that you can op occupy the center space, because you will have that day. You will have that boss, you will have that classmate, and you will have that colleague. And if at that moment you believe that you need to step back and be that supporting actress, I am here to tell you that there are thousands of us behind you, that we are here to support you and that we're here to root for you. But most importantly, that we are here to see what you will do. So what will you do? Will you be the author of an amazing book? Or will you be merely the collaborator in a magazine article and you're still waiting for your editor to give you permission. Remember, be the protagonist of your own story. Be your most zealous advocate and tell an impactful tale. My name is Macarena Tamayo Calabrese. I'm a proud Latina immigrant and a damn good lawyer. Yeah. <laughs>